like connecting with RZA? Maybe describe that experience. I was, it was, uh, I would say it was, uh, it was, it was amazing to me. I, I knew that it wasn't as a crazy moment for him as it was for me <laughs> because it was kind of like, uh, man, it was like some TV shit. Like, I, it was like my third or fourth trip to New York. Uh, you know, the story is out there how I rode the Greyhound to try to catch RZA. And so, finally on the fourth visit, you know, I, I called him or whatever and I think Knife Prince let me in. I was banging beats for other groups all day. They was going crazy. And then like four in the morning, RZA got there and uh, uh, he didn't pay us no attention, man. He was just looking at me and Kev like, who the fuck is this? Like, and so, you know, we was just quiet, but I seen he was handling business that and the other, and I'm waiting for my, you know, my good moment to, to, to get in there. But, you know, he was circling around doing this that, and the other. And then finally he came back out again and uh, it's him, Master Killer and Jizza. And they was like, yo, let's uh, let's go to the club. And I was like, no, 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 no. He can't leave. He can't leave without, you know, without me hollering at him real quick. And so, uh, so I was like, yo, I just stepped to him like, yo, Rizzo, before you go, man, can I get five minutes, man? Just five minutes. You know, that's why I said it was on some TV shit. I was like, let me get five minutes, man. <laughs> and he looked at me. He looked at the door like he really wanted to go, but then he was like, all right, you got five minutes. He took me back into like the orchestra, the orchestra booth. It was this big booth. And I played him a song of mine called Blow Gun. Bone, causing the tetanus syndrome. Thin clone, vocal cords, knock hurricanes off board. Golf club swing for us, sound like the cling of my sword. I did the beat, I did the rhymes on there. It was me rhyming. And uh, I was just, I was trying to get on as an MC. Um, and so he, you know, he listened to the whole joint. He was nodding. I was, I was feeling good. Like, okay. <laughs> so he took out the headphones. He was like, who made that beat? And I said, I did. And he was like, all right, I got enough MCs, but I want you to join the Wu Elements. Cause I, I did wow. do, I did some crazy shit to the beat. I, I really did some, some heavy filtering and brought like instruments out from the background and, and highlighted. It was, it was a nice cut up. So, uh, I guess that impressed him and he was just like, yo, Come back tomorrow. I'm have some paperwork for you. So, you know, the rest is history. You know what I mean? That's crazy. Uh, yeah, it was it was quick, but you know, from then on, it was like you know, it, he taught me more about the business side of things and watching how shit evolves and how to run the studio and shit like that. So, working with RZA is, is, is always enlightening. You know what I mean? So, what was the first project you worked on with RZA? I did uh, I did two beats on uh, RZA's album, The Birth of a Prince. Um, I did a joint called A Day to God is a Thousand Years, and I did a joint called The Birth, which is when he uh, went from Bobby Digital back to Bobby Steele's and everybody went crazy, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, that was the first time, and, and, and it was like that summer, he had me, I stayed in New York for like most of the summer, in uh, one of his apartments that he had for his artists, so it was just like every day, get up, shoot to the studio by like 10 or so, just watch the whole day of business go down, heard some crazy joints. I heard, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I heard uh, it was an R&B group who was using Triumph. I don't know if that ever came out or not, but they was doing the remix, and I heard all the pieces of the beat. Man, that shit was crazy, bro. Like layers of shit. Like, so there's no way that came out because uh, I feel like yeah. I would have heard that. Yeah, I, I, I've never, I've never bumped into it either. But I, I, you know, hearing the separated tracks and all that shit, oh. shit, shit was amazing, man. Wow. Yeah. That's what I'm just I'm just imagining someone singing over Triumph. That shit, it's so obvious. That's crazy. Yeah, bro, it was. Uh, I'm just on the couch. Like, uh, wow, he did that. He chimes. Oh, this is a different track. Like, <laughs> wow, yeah, it was dope, man. Good experience. Who's the group? Do you remember the group? I, uh, I don't even remember. I don't think I I, knew, I don't know who they were at the time. You know, I was just kind of kind of a fly on the wall in the back. You know, watch the operations and shit. You know what I mean? So that's wild. Yeah, it was like, yo, they was just doing their thing. Uh, I might have I might have heard the name back then, but I, yeah, I can't remember, man. It didn't make an impact, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? It's wild. I, I feel like I feel like a lot of Wu affiliates don't get as much kind of just doing recognition, especially on the production side. Cuz I think a lot of people who don't like who don't know Wu deep enough and just kind of no surface woo, just kind of feel that RZA made every beat 
forever. You know what I'm saying? That's just, yeah. <laughs> it's just the Absolutely. common yeah. thing everyone. So yeah. I think I think like you're one. I think like mathematic. Like I think a lot of these people yeah. kind of become unsung heroes. You know what I mean? Yeah, Making these projects, that everyone just assumes RZA makes them because ah, he's yeah. the producer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's just in that if it's, if it's in that Wu Tang, you know, beehive, then it, yeah, it, it kind of gets all lumped together. You know what I mean? And that that's been one of my main things too. Like, I, you know, that's 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 family. That's them still my guys or whatever. But I've also been, you know, steadfast on trying to move myself out of that shadow too. You know what I mean? And I, yeah. I, I think I've done well. You know, working with independent guys like Crooked Eye. You know what I'm saying? I did the Cannabis album. You know. And just my own solo joints, you know, so people know it, you know, I'm 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 fam and all that shit, but I'm in my whole own chamber, you know what I mean? So that was this one time, man, we was I I I I think it was the same summer as we did Birth of a Prince. And uh it's like four in the morning and old Dirty showed up. And uh he was just in like he just had jeans on. And just a Celtics jersey, no undershirt, nothing. And just, you know, being himself, man, genuine, raw, old, dirty. And uh, he was getting RZA to go to the club across the street. So it was me, RZA, old, dirty, and Beretta 9 from Kill Army. And so we, we, you know, we grab all that shit up. We start going outside, we get across the street and old, dirty goes over to a car. And then out of the car, grabs these two chicks. And he got these two ladies on one on each arm and with his Celtics jersey on. And we just strolled into the club. As soon as we get to the doors, they just let us right in. And it was just like, man, it was just like instant party, man. So uh, uh, no drama, no nothing, just bottles. Uh, and it was dope, man. It was dope to spend the night with, with Old Dirty in the club, RZA, uh, and uh, to see that that real celebrity, like, as soon as they seen him, they was just like, boom, opened up the, the you know, the little, little shits, they got to block the door, they opened up them shits, let us right in, no <laughs> questions, nothing. So, uh, that was one of my illest stories, man, because I'm, I'm just, I was just coming, uh, I think I was just coming out of my second year of college and shit, too, so, wow. it was like, yo, this is crazy, so, uh, <laughs> yo, uh, it was, it was a wild night, man, and, uh, Old Dirty was hilarious that night, man, always just, Always good humor, man. Good dude. So that's very memorable moment for me right there. And that's dope that you got to be kind of part of the fold when when Dirty was still around, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. But that's one of the things that uh, uh, was uh, uh, mad disappointing, obviously, when, 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 when he passed because I didn't even get to really get in the mix with him yet. And... And I, I know that RZA was setting that up. It was like that same weekend he was telling me, not not the same weekend when we went to the club, he was telling me how, you know, he wanted me to get some beats so old dirty. I was like, shit, let's do it. So I think we would have cooked, man. So, you know, oh, sure. God rest, brother. ODB, man. You know. <laughs>